What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get too deep into this one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know why. You know why I love y'all. Because I'm not too proud to ask, if that makes sense. <laughs> all right, y'all. So, it's been rumored that PlayStation 5 could have backwards compatibility, all right? And that backwards compatibility can stem all the way back, I believe, to PlayStation 1, right? Um, if I'm reading this right, yeah. So I want to talk to y'all a little bit about the source of this information. Then I want to also talk to you guys about some thoughts about it and give you my take on whether this is relevant or not, okay? If I can do that. All right, so first and foremost, all right, let's let's go over to the source here. The source is via Hip Hop Gamer, but I'm going to read it to you as from sportsbible.com. They, they cut right to the chase, and I appreciate that, right? <laughs> it, makes my, it makes me doing these type of videos a lot easier. So they say PlayStation 5 could be backwards compatible with games from Sony's past consoles. Okay. And it reads, the highly anticipated PlayStation 5 could be fully backwards compatible with titles from Sony's four major home consoles, according to a stunning report. Um, it says, the Japanese company announced in 2019 that the next generation console would officially drop in holiday 2020. And fans have been keen for Sony to offer support for titles from previous PlayStation consoles, which could happen in the upcoming PlayStation 5. Now, according to Hip Hop Gamer, Sony is reportedly working on a remaster engine that would allow fans to run titles from PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the home console. And the revolutionary tool would provide various enhancements for older titles that are accessed on PlayStation 5. And here they have a snippet from Hip Hop Gamer where he makes the claim. Um, and he has a link to, to the video. And you guys can go to sportsbible.com, check out the links there, and check out his video. Um, it also reads, Sony's first rival Microsoft has been working on backwards compatibility support for Xbox 360 titles. Okay. So we know compa backwards compatibility isn't something new, right? But here's something else that has happened in the advent of all this. Um, fellow content creator went out there and put a post out there and said, look, um, I don't get why you guys are all excited about backwards compatibility. Why are people still excited to play old games from 1991, I, I believe the, the, the comment was. And it went viral in the gaming world. You know, when people saying, oh man, this is crazy. You know, they, 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 they cold snapped or whatever they say out here. You know, I'm an old folk, I have no idea, right? And uh, then you had people that was like, oh, this jerk, this idiot, da, 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 da. Um, here's what I have to say about that and backwards compatibility altogether. I think whether it's beneficial or not depends on the gamer, right? Like, if you're a, I've noticed that there's all types of gamers, but two of the most predominant type of gamers are gamers that like to stockpile games as stripes and say oh i beat this and i beat this in five seconds right and just go through run through game after game and those that like to savor game right now i started off when i was younger like the like the uh former i liked it you know i had my nes or whatever it was and i just the goal was just to beat a game as quick as possible you know what i'm saying to get to the end as I've gotten older and I've played all types of games for over 30 years, man, 30 years, that's longer than a lot of you have been alive. I no longer, and, and now I'm fully funding these games on my own, right? With the family, kids, and so forth, right? Grandkids, all that fun stuff. I like to savor my games. I like to save them like a fine wine. So I'm not so quick to rush through and beat them. I like to go over every nook and cranny of the game, enjoy it. Maybe if there's firefights involved, let's say it's a shooter, go through a couple firefights. It's, I, I'm not in the biggest rush to beat a game. I'm enjoying the game, right? So, uh, with that being said, Perfect. people like me that are in the ladder 
may big might create a bigger stockpile than games gamers of the former gamers that like to run through games and still just beat games and add it to their catalog right um so therefore being able to go back and experience older games that people may have enjoyed or loved that you never got a chance to touch you know what i'm saying due to whatever reasons and you being able to do it if it is upscaled to 4k whatever better resolutions if it looks better i think it's fantastic you know we just had mike yabara online not too long ago talk about how he just he just touched the last of us and after beating it i believe he has now he's excited for the second one last of us came out a long time ago <laughs> you know what i'm saying so again and i know from listening to some of their material that the person that this comment was rooted in that they're the type of gamer that likes to just beat game stockpile and that's fine you know what i'm saying nothing wrong with that just like there's nothing wrong with people that like to savor and play games here's what we need to stop doing as gamers okay take it from somebody that's been doing it again a lot longer than a lot of you have been alive okay we need to stop with this there is this de facto type of gamer I mean, I get it. There are a lot of people that like to talk about games that have an opportunity to play games and they just don't play them. That's different. Those are people that are trying to, those are, I don't want to say culture vultures, but they kind of are. They're, they're, they're gaming culture vultures. They love to get and talk about gaming and do all this and research that, but they don't, they, they don't touch a goddamn game. Okay. I get, that's different. But people that play games consistently, like I, I play games every day. I play Borderlands. I've been playing Borderlands damn well every day, if not every other day since its release. And I ain't going nowhere because I start a new game. and do. That's how I like to play games. But I love playing games. I just don't love playing games to the point to where I'm going to run through this and beat it. Okay, I'm going to run through it and beat it. I don't like doing that. That's why I love the Fallout games and those type of Bethesda uh, software games where you can journey. I love journeying and experience different things in games. But if you like to beat the game and say, okay, add it to my catalog, add it to my belt, if that's what floats your boat, there's nothing wrong with that either. But again, as gamers, stop with this de facto style of gaming. We all support games, we all buy games, we all invest in games, and we all add to the culture. There's something predominant now and just this culture period outside of games where I want to be the, the sayer, the king of what you're supposed to do. And this is the only way to do it. And not just that, that goes to the opposite of diversifying the community. Even the, the community was more diverse 30 years ago than it is now with all the technology that's out now. And we wonder why we keep getting the same old ish every other day. Again, I repeat, think about this. The community is more was more diverse 30 years ago than it is now and stuff that people are willing to play, willing to indulge in, ways to play, even though we got all this technology. And y'all wonder why y'all get the same old-ish, okay? So again, nothing wrong with people that want to play games and run through them, but there's nothing wrong with people that want to savor games and because they want to savor games, they may want to jump in older experiences. Nothing wrong with any of that. And there's also nothing wrong with person, the whoever it is posing that question. So, you know, I mean, I we're so quick to attack. And maybe we need to think about, think twice about that, right? You know, like let's have opinions, let's have differences in states of thoughts and let's talk it out. You know what I'm saying? But everybody just wants to attack, attack, attack. But those are my thoughts on it. I think I, I think this would be great. I remember buying PlayStation 3s that had the PlayStation 2 backwards compatibility because I love RPGs and there was some even PlayStation 2 RPGs that I didn't finish. You know what I'm saying? And that would still be the, the case to this day. So um, that being said, let me know what you guys think about all this. How is backwards compatibility? And what do you guys think about the notion of playing older games just ain't it anymore? You know what I'm saying? Or what do you think about my breakdown of the different style of gamers? Let me know in the comment section below because like I always tell you, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, you can catch me on the corner every boulevard, baby. Check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the fastly growing Stadia Dosage. Check me out there. And with that being said, you guys 
Get ready for the CES 2020. Let's see what's going to happen there. And y'all have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.